but he's the fucking dick you need. He is the asshole you need. I think it's nice he's filled out. Shows he's happy. Yeah, what fat and happy, that's the ticket. <laughs> did he say something? What did he say? He didn't say anything. <laughs> Come on now. Don't, you can't be saying this enigmatic shit. Yes. She'd be happy and grateful. He's showering her friends. Yeah, that she took his... what he put her through. That's what I'm saying. His Grammy ass. I'm not fight. I'll say whatever you think I should say, but I'm not going to fight with you. <laughs> That's how you shut that shit down. You can... I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying sometimes you can feel like shit's headed for a fight. If you say that out loud, you can kind of nip it in the bud. That's a good strategy because, you know, sometimes fighting's good. I think once or twice a year you should fight to get some shit out. Like, you get some shit out you're afraid to say. Other than that, you shouldn't be fighting beyond that, probably. You know. It's just not good. It's not... The subtext is not lost on me, by the way. You know, she still thinks he's cheating. She knows in the back of her mind he is. Come on now. What, sweetheart? Hmm? He laughed. What's funny? Oh. Damn, she is up his just, ass, man. I'm allowed to sit here and laugh, motherfucker. I was just thinking that those ugly little pushed-in faces, the labored breathing. Damn, I actually agree with him with something. I hate ugly he dogs, they man. Were. There are some... Dogs are not like pizza. There is such, no such thing as bad pizza. There is such thing as an ugly dog. Peter, neither of you knew it was the last time. You can't dwell on Fighting negative shit, facts, man. Fighting my mother calls it. We do it all the time. Argue over something that's Boy, this is prophetic. <laughs> what do Barney's dogs look like? Just beige. They're ugly as fuck, I just said. Kind of like pugs, but with big ears. Ugly. Those are French bulldogs. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Busted. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Dumbass. When I woke up, I felt fine for a minute. Yeah, I've been there and done that. Because then, then the memories flood back in. You should be thinking about the good times. Right. Agreed. You can focus on whatever you want to focus on. Focus on the good times, man. The bad shit will wash away. Despite what I just said about the argument. That was about me. It's not about him. Right? I remember that so that I can become a better person. One to Mr. Smith. Uh, this strange one. That doesn't narrow it down. Thank you. <laughs> God damn. Mr. Kinsey. I love her. Unless you deal with Peggy, I love her. Look at her. Look at that look on I'm her face. I'm avoiding you. <laughs> she loves this after. Peter, I'm not going to tell anyone. Although you are so brazen, you don't deserve clemency. <laughs> she likes us about him. <laughs> what do you say, Sheila? Who? Sheila. Oh, my girlfriend. You know who, bitch. What a relief. You're just jealous. Because you're the one who got Yeah, <laughs> That's right. You out there in your poor little rich boy apartment in Newark or wherever. She is such a cunt. I fucking love her so much. <laughs> well, I love that girl just to show how interesting you are. Such a cunt. Go ahead. What part is wrong? Your face is wrong. <laughs> and they say this shit. Look at how many people overheard that. At least four. You know? Probably six. If we're going to go with six dex dust radius, right? When my old man died, I went on a hell of a bender. Yeah. Oh, you heard? Like I said, bender, da, da. I wish you felt that you could talk to me about it. You should be able to. We're practically I'm jealous here. of you, man. Thought you knew that. There's not a lot to say. No, of course not. <laughs> I like Duck a lot, man. I really do. Everything about him. My father wasn't. <laughs> Of course, it turns out I really didn't know anything about him except that he did not yeah, like Yeah, he was hiding a bunch of shit. Uh, What's well, not to be proud of? You pay attention, you're hungry. Most of the time, you know what you're doing. I've noticed that. Yeah, most of the time. I want you leading the way on this thing. It's all an opportunity. I think I am uncomfortable. Oh, shit. Really? I don't think I should do that. It just happened. He's worried about how it looks. I haven't even no, I thought you were it. hungry. I like him, man, a lot. I really do. He's a dick, but see, like I said, you need that. You need a dick. I know that's going to be taken out of context. 
<laughs> I already mentally, as soon as I said, I said, well, I guess I know what the, the cold open is for this episode. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I keep doing this to myself. But um, you need a dick. Damn, that was quick. Mark. I thought they had a commercial, but it was like a 10 second commercial. I'll elaborate later. Can you come in here with the papers I asked oh, for? Oh, shit. Another incompetent ass secretary. Oh, shit. I forgot it was her. Don't make her cry, you dick. Sweetheart? You mind? God damn, he called me in here. What do you mean, you I mind? Fuck, man. You can't serve two masters. Why would I do that? Because we're cutting him loose. And that gets us a pitch. It sends a signal that we're serious. You need to be left with nothing, man. He has nothing. What kind of company are we going to be? The kind where everyone has a summer house? Yeah. <laughs> it's such, a, such an asshole. I love the assholes, too. look like an idiot for wanting to be loyal to these people. I'll take off your dress. You get a chance at American <laughs> Airlines, you take <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sketch ain't over, bitch. I ain't doing it. What if these two can lead a palace coup? Hildy, can you get my wife on the phone? Of course. And why the fuck were you watching the door Forget earlier? It. Damn. Now I'm on her side. The fuck's wrong with you, motherfucker? Figure out what you want. Well, he wanted to cry to his wife. Now he wants to cry to her. Dick. Go to Don and lead this palace coup, man. Fuck this. We are not going to American Airlines. Mr. Campbell? <laughs> Don, do you have a minute? What he do really does not give a shit about that fucking secretary at all. This is twice. It's not a good time. Don't be a dick. I can't believe I'm taking a bunny rabbit's side. Holy shit, man. Damn, man. Why am I on the bunny rabbit's side? God damn it. He's a fucking douchebag. But, you know, even douchebags have feelings. He Somehow he sees Don as like a father figure, man. I just did not... I didn't clock that, man. I don't know why I didn't see that. I'm usually good at seeing shit like that. Good night, Joe. Uh-oh. Looks like the writer got some revenge. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Boom! I never would have guessed you were in your 30s. Revenge is sweet. Personal problems into the office. <laughs> I agree. Is it so hard to just leave everything at the door and just do your job? I agree. I look forward to it. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> They'll drag you into the garbage out there. I just want you to be so as miserable good. as they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Later. I say let them have it. I got work to do, bitch. <laughs> he got his revenge on her, man. Never piss off a writer. I'm telling you, man. Don't fucking do it. Don't piss off a writer. Tread carefully in these comments, man. <laughs> Are you really going to do this shit, asshole? Jesus. You know, I'm glad you picked this place. It reminds me of Pearl Harbor. For many reasons. Yeah, he knows what this is. I bet he figured it out. Relationship with Mohawk Airlines. He knew. Sterling Cooper. I'm sorry. It wasn't my decision. You know, when we came in there, they all said Sterling Cooper is Don Draper. That's what you get. Wow. Way to dig him. And that talk you gave me about us growing together. He's pissed. He said, Sterling Cooper didn't need a big airline. You were going to make us a big airline. Jesus, man. Twist the knife. I wish things hadn't worked out this way. He's a good soldier. I give him that. I'm almost embarrassed to say this. You fooled me. <laughs> God damn. That motherfucker twisted five knives, man. He didn't just twist one knife, he twisted five knives. Holy shit. I really hope I can deal with a uh, disappointment that gracefully. I guess word gets around. Like, they must have heard about the meeting, you know, with the, that had been set up with American Airlines. You know, motherfuckers gossip and shit, you know. Also, the fact that, you know, set a meeting with somebody two days after a big fucking uh, accident like that, you know something's up. Well, we're not. We jumped in. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that, dumbass. Pete. Holy shit. I did not expect this. So now you're going to try to make him your fucking uh, father Shall figure. This is Pete Campbell. Young up and comer. People Pleased like to that. meet you. You as well. My buddy Shell here. He's going to bring up his dad. Uh, uh, we've really cleared the way to be in this. I've already got a stack of ideas on my desk that I think you'd love to see. Yeah, this is kind of weak. 
I want you to know that should you decide to bring us your business, there will be someone on your account who knows exactly what you're going through. He's going to use his father. Jesus Christ. My father was on that plane. <laughs> That's right, motherfucker. Say it back, your ass. Say it back. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> yes. Thank <well>, you. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Hopefully something good will come of it. Jesus God Almighty, There's man. something I will pass on. <laughs> Holy shit. Should we grab a bite? <laughs> He's fucking duck is ruthless, man. Why do you think I love this motherfucker? He is ruthless. This is not the kind of role model that Peter needs, man. He needs Don Draper as his role model. And Don Draper just isn't there for him. He's not about family, man. He thinks he's about family, but he's not about family. Like I said, identity, you know? Who are you going to be? Who do you want to emulate? Yep, that's right. You might as well cheat. Fuck it. That's how he eases his pain. Are you all set here? Yeah. <laughs> Have a seat, baby. You've been sitting alone a long time. Can I get you a menu? I don't think so. What's on your menu? That's what I want to I can swing back around on my way out. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You gonna do it, motherfucker? Grimy ass. Not tonight. Oh, shit. Holy shit! We, it's when the dog doesn't eat. <laughs> God damn. I did not see that coming. Even he seems kind of surprised. They do kind of get antsy, by the way, when you don't fucking uh, order anything. You're just sitting there for a long time. Like, man, you're taking up a table, motherfucker. She actually went. I'm surprised. Get that fucking baby away from me. The fuck you doing? Don't make me cut you. Yeah, this ain't my mama. Now you got this baby crying and shit. It troubles me if that's what they needed, how they got the baby to cry. I don't want to know. Because time is money. If the baby ain't crying, how do you get that effect? Like, I don't, that's very troubling to me. I've never had to shoot anything like that. Damn, man, you got this whole rich, you got to bend down and shit. My knees hurt, man. I ain't doing that shit. You got to fucking bend down before you can even get over there? I'm going to give you the best piece of business advice I've ever learned in my entire life. If you have a business that you're not just working by yourself, you know, you have any kind of business that has a series of employees, you need a dick. You need an asshole. An asshole will get shit done, man. And I'm not talking about the kind of asshole who takes pleasure in causing pain. Like that... You don't need that. You need an asshole who gets shit down. He's not afraid for people not to like him. I've told this story before, so I'll keep this short. I was hired onto a pretty big project, and I was going to be the uh, line producer. The line producer pretty much knows all the details. They handle everything, you know, um, from the ground up, all the logistics. The day I was hired, and I was brought in, the project had been in pre production for fucking weeks, months, actually. And we were shooting in two days. And so this was the last production meeting before they started shooting. I was hired that day and brought in because he had had to fire somebody. He was a friend of mine. He had to fire somebody. So I'm sitting there. I'm sitting next to the, uh, the AD, you know, the, the assistant director. The assistant director introduced himself to me. He hadn't seen me before, you know. But, but it was the kind of thing where, like, they were meeting with different people. Like, this was the first time everybody was in the same room together. So it was possible that I had been attached to the project for months, you know. And so he just hadn't run into me, you know, different meetings. So he turned to me and said, so, so, you know, who are you? I introduced myself. I said, I'm the line producer. He said, yeah, you know, he introduced himself. He's the assistant director. He said, so, are we ready to go? Do we have everything we need? I said, I have no idea. He said, you're supposed to know. That's your job. It's your job to know. And, it just, and he didn't know that I'd literally just been hired that day. And he told me this later. He's like, if I'd known, obviously I wouldn't have said that. But he's right. It was my job to know if I had been attached to the project for months. It was absolutely my job to know. So he was right, but like he had no hesitation to say that shit to me. Because he knew with the job of everybody on set, like what they're supposed to do. And it pissed me off. I was like, damn, I don't like this dude. I did not like him one single bit. Like that just, it was, it was rude as fuck. It was presumptive as, as hell. And I didn't fucking, and, <laughs> and all I said was I know, right? Like, you know, I didn't even explain myself. 
It pissed me off. The thing is, after that job was done, I didn't. I have not shot a single project since then without him being involved. He gets shit done, and I do. I, I love the man now, right? But like you know, I love him mostly because he gets shit done, and he could, you know, I have not had a single project. I was shooting for fucking three years, I think, after that. Did not have a single project go over schedule. We were always done. Usually, you know, when you shoot, you're aiming for a 12-hour day. Sometimes you're aiming for a 10-hour day. It depends. Like, if, especially if it's like a location shoot, you need the light. There, there's, all, there's variables. But typically, you're aiming, aiming for a 10 or 12-hour day. Rarely did I get out of there before 14 hours. That's just how it goes. That's the way shit happens. Usually, we're talking about 15, 16 hours. Or we don't get everything we need shot. It's one or the other. A lot of times I would get the 12-hour day, but we would be three pages short. And then we'd have to try to make it up. And sometimes we have to add another day shooting as expensive as fuck. We were getting out of there in nine or ten hours. Shooting fucking 14 pages, 20 pages sometimes in nine or ten hours. Just because of this man. Get shit done. And this works for any fucking business. Duck Phillips gets shit done. He's a fucking dick you need. He is the asshole you need. You have to have this in your business. You have to have this. You have to have the fucking asshole. They get shit done. That's the most valuable employee you will ever have. Don Draper is valuable as fuck in his role. Okay? Duck Phillips is valuable as fuck. You know, that's why I love the man so much. Like, it just it reminds me so much of this AD. Everything about it just reminds me. He kind of looks like him. Now, what I did not see coming was Pete Campbell glomming onto this motherfucker because he needs someone. He needs that father figure, clearly. And I never saw that dynamic with with uh, Don Draper. I saw it as the young buck is trying to take over. He's trying to, you know, get the crown. He's trying to kill the king and become the king, right? That's what I saw the relationship as. When it actually was, he's looking for a mentor. Everything played. It, it, you could have read it either way, but the way it was actually happening on screen was... He actually did want to... So I thought when he said he wanted uh, Don Draper's respect, he was bullshitting to try to take over, right? No, he actually did. He actually did. And being re rejected means he's going over to Duck Phillips, you know? Very interesting. You know, like, I think this show just gets more and more fascinating the further we get into it. 